Welcome back to your free Windows 7 training. We have already looked at how to install a fresh copy of Windows 7 using the DVD. Using the DVD works well when you don't have to make any changes to the media and you only have a few computers on which to install Windows 7. In this video, I will look at installing Windows 7 using a USB thumb drive onto a virtual hard disk. This allows you to set up Windows 7 for the main topic in this video, dual booting. Dual booting allows you to have many operating systems installed on the same hard disk. This includes non-Microsoft operating systems such as Linux. In the old days, dual booting was the only choice when you wanted to run more than one operating system on the same hard disk. When you start a computer that uses dual booting, you will be given a menu like this. From the menu, you can select the operating system you want to use. This computer contains three operating systems. When you boot the computer, you will be presented with this menu. The top option, earlier version of Windows, will load Windows XP. The second option will load Windows 7. And the last option will load Windows Server 2008 Release 2. The problem with dual booting is that changing operating systems requires you to reboot. This is often inconvenient for the user and time consuming. However, dual booting does allow you to boot into a non-Microsoft operating system such as Linux. Nowadays, dual booting is not as common due to the use of virtual machines. Nowadays, if you wanted to try out Linux, for example, you could simply install it to a virtual machine rather than using dual booting. However, there are still times you may want to use dual booting. If you are upgrading and want to perform a clean install rather than upgrading your old OS, you may decide to install the new OS on a separate drive to give you the option to roll back to the old operating system. This is common when upgrading to a new OS that does not support an application installed on the old operating system. Even with the low price of RAM, the computer you are using may not have enough RAM to run more than one operating system at a time. Low RAM is another reason to use dual booting. Lastly, dual booting is often used with special hardware needs. Hardware support for virtual machines is improving, but if you have hardware that won't work in a virtual machine, dual booting may be your only option. To use dual booting, you are required to have a separate hard disk or partition. You can, in theory, install multiple operating systems to the same partition, but this is a risky configuration, difficult to get working, and not supported by Microsoft. Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 Release 2 bring support for virtual hard disks. If you are using either of these operating systems, you can dual boot to a virtual hard disk. With Windows 7, you need to be running the Enterprise or Ultimate Editions to support booting to a virtual hard disk. The advantage of this is that you don't need to install a new hard disk or partition an existing hard disk. Also, if you decide you no longer want the additional operating system, you simply remove the virtual hard disk from your computer and then remove the operating system from the boot menu. In a moment, I will show you a dual booting scenario in which I will install a second operating system to a virtual hard disk. Also in the demo, I will install Windows 7 using a USB thumb drive. Before I can start, I first need to configure my USB thumb drive to install Windows. To do this, first I need to open a command prompt from the start menu. Make sure you right click the command prompt and select Run as Administrator. From the command prompt, run the utility Disk Part. This is a console version of disk management. First of all, I need to identify which disk designation is associated with my USB thumb drive. To do this, type List Disk. From the list of disks shown, I can determine that my USB thumb drive is Disk 2, as it is the only drive listed that is 4 GB in size. Before I can do anything to the disk, I need to select it using the command Select Disk 2. Once selected, you can run other commands. For example, if you needed to create a partition on the drive, 
you could run the command create partition primary. In this case, I will get an error message as the drive already contains a partition. To see which partitions exist on the drive, run the command list volume. Here you can see my thumb drive is volume 4. Once I know the number of the volume, I need to select it using the select command. The USB thumb drive needs to be formatted with FAT32. This thumb drive is already formatted with FAT32. Most USB thumb drives on the market should be formatted with FAT32 by default. If you do need to format it, run the command format with the switch FS followed by equals FAT32. And finally, I like to add the switch quick. This will perform a quick format of the drive. If you leave the quick switch out, you will be waiting a long time for your USB flash drive to format. Once the format is complete, you need to run the command active. The active command makes the US thumb drive bootable. If you do not run this command, the BIOS will not be able to boot from the USB thumb drive. The USB thumb drive is now formatted and bootable. Once I exit out of the disk part utility, I now need to copy the source files from my Windows 7 DVD. I can do this by using the xcopy command with the source and destination switches followed by the slash s switch to include subdirectories. This process does take a long time to complete, but once done I can switch to my Windows 7 computer to perform the install. For this install, I want to use the USB thumb drive rather than the DVD. The USB thumb drive is ready to go, but I need somewhere to install the operating system. To make some room, I will run Computer Management from the Start menu. From Computer Management, select Disk Management. If I right-click on my hard disk, I can select Shrink Volume. This will allow me to change the size of the partition on the hard drive. You will only be able to shrink the hard disk according to how much free space you have. If you find that you can't shrink the hard disk down as much as you thought you could, you may need to defrag the hard disk first. Defragging the hard disk will move all the free space for the drive to one location at the end of the drive. In order for the shrink command to work, the free space must be at the end of the hard disk. Before you shrink a partition, however, you should back up your data. Once you shrink your hard disk, you can create a new partition on which to install Windows. In this case, I will install Windows to a virtual hard disk. This means that partition on the hard disk will not be affected. To create the virtual hard disk, right-click on Disk Management and select Create VHD. From here, you need to enter in the name and path of the VHD file and select the size of the virtual hard disk. By default, the hard disk will be a fixed size and the drive space will be allocated when you create the hard disk. You can also select the option Dynamically Expanding. This means that the hard disk will grow in size as the data is written to the virtual hard disk. The performance of a dynamically expanding hard disk is not as good as a fixed sized hard disk. However, the advantage is that a dynamically expanding hard disk is smaller in size and is created immediately while a fixed size virtual hard disk may take a while to create. In this example, I will create a dynamically expanding hard disk. Once created, the hard disk will appear in disk management like any other hard disk. Now that it is created, I will reboot my computer to perform the install from the USB thumb drive. Assuming your BIOS is set up correctly, the BIOS will boot off the thumb drive automatically. If not, you will need to change your boot order or press a key to access the boot menu during startup. Common keys to access the boot menu include F10, F12, and Escape. Booting from USB thumb drive will be exactly the same as booting from the DVD. Also, if you were to run the setup from a network share, the setup would essentially be the same. 
Once booted, you will see the welcome screen and the license screen just like the DVD setup. Just as with the DVD setup, I will skip past these. On this screen, you will need to decide where you want to install Windows. You will notice that the virtual hard disk has not appeared. To get it to appear, I need to run Disk Part. To access Disk Part, press Shift F10 to open a command prompt. From the command prompt, run Disk Part. If you wanted to, you could create the virtual hard disk using the Create command inside Disk Part. It is your choice how you create it, but it is generally easier to use the graphical disk management tool if it is available. Regardless of how you create it, you need to select it using the Select VDisk command. Once selected, run the command Attach VDisk. If I now exit Disk Part and the command prompt, you will notice that when I press the Refresh option, my hard disk will now appear. If I now select the virtual disk, I can install Windows to it. Windows will now install to the virtual hard disk. If I pause the video now and then unpause when the install is complete, notice that on the boot menu you now have the choice of two different Windows 7 operating systems. In this video, I looked at dual booting your computer, installing from a USB thumb drive, and installing to a virtual hard disk. This is great if you want to install a fresh copy of Windows 7. If you are running Windows already, you may want to consider an upgrade, which is the topic of our next video.